Uh, this is your Wednesday. This is your make good for the Wednesday live episode that will not be happening right now. But you are watching this, a gift from us to you. Why? Because we just set the mixed martial arts world afire, Luke, with, with our coverage of, of the Bellator Showtime announcement. In all seriousness, Luke, this big MMA news is big freaking news, bro. Yeah, it was a big deal. Was I was happy to be part of the live stream. We did a live interview show afterwards that I hope everybody has already checked out on YouTube. Yep. And Luke, I don't really... Uh, mm. <laughs> I don't really know how to bounce back from that, right? Um, You're a disgusting creature. Luke, I, I don't think we should go any further. Because I, I don't know if you're going to make it through this interview. Bop, bada, bop, bop. Yeah, my microphone was off for a while there. Uh, it's on now. People think I don't speak loud enough on this show, so I'm going to talk right into the mic, all right? Yeah, you don't. Uh, yeah, so this day got weird. Um, so yesterday, uh, what was happening? It was like 11.30-ish. P.M., all right? P.M., and no, more than that. So let's say 10 o'clock. I started to get uh, really bad stomach pains, but that's not unusual. So I was like, okay, it's probably, it's probably heartburn. It's just heartburn. Yeah. So, I took some heartburn medication, and it just got worse and worse and worse. And then it was to the point where I, it was affecting my breathing because it was pushing on something inside of my internal organs. And then it got to the point where uh, I was starting to get nauseous. And um, no matter where I stood or laid or whatever, I was in excruciating pain. That was some of the worst pain I've ever had in my life. And you know, So this got real. This is not a joke or a bit. This was some scary shit because you started texting me saying, dude, I'm I, not okay. Dude, I need to go to the hospital now. Yeah, I need to go to the hospital. So, because I was looking up symptoms, it was like, once you start getting nausea, uh, you need to go. So I was like, okay, let's go. And uh, Did it burn while you peed? Was that part of it at all? It could have if there was blood. Like, there could be cases where what I had can result in that. In fact, they made me give them a urine sample. God, it was awful. I had to go there to give him a urine sample, and the guy was like, um, I'm giving you a wet wipe. You ever go to KFC? And I'm like, yeah. He was like, I'm going to give you a wet wipe. Was he trying to say you had a dirty dong? <laughs> no. It was yes and no. And I was like, dude, you don't have to overcomplicate this. What the fuck you want me to do with this? And he's like, because of the way that what we think you might have works, we have to get you to clean your hog. He goes, and, but the way he said it was like, uh, use this to clean the head of your penile area. I'm like, dude, we're two grown men. Just tell me what the fuck you want me to do. So anyway, I it, imagine Bronstetter saying that, by the way, the way you did that voice. Yeah, I know. Well, I th love that guy. In any case, uh, the urine sample was fine. There was nothing wrong with that, which means to say that though I didn't have internal bleeding. But uh, they gave me this like hardcore well, you're, you're narcotic. You're fast-forwarding. So I drove you to the hospital. You're fast-forwarding way too fast. Yeah, I am. Right? I drove you to the hospital. It was close to midnight. Another uh, great producer on our show, Matt, was with us from Showtime. And Luke, um, I, I, didn't, I didn't know if you were going to make it, bro. It was getting. It got worse and worse and worse. I couldn't even sit. I couldn't. I couldn't move anywhere without feeling like. And they took their all kinds of long time to get yeah. you into uh, to be well, seen. Once they got me in the room, and they got me on the narcotic, I felt better like right away. You were like, <laughs> inject me with morphine in the dick, please. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. I want to go morphine to dick first. <laughs> um, anyway, long story short, so the security guard they kicked was, you all out. The security guard was on break for the first hour, so we were yeah. able to chill in there with you. <laughs> then he comes back from lunch. He's, he's like, like y'all aren't supposed to be <laughs> here. <laughs> he's like, bro, I've been here 11 here half the night. I know. He's like, there's not supposed to be any visitors here. And I'm like, yeah, people who are desperately and you know ill to the point of emergency, they should do that alone. <laughs> that's that's how they should do medicine. So they, they kicked us that. out. I get it. There's COVID restrictions, but literally when we got there, there was one old lady watching Queen Latifah on TV. And you returned, what, at 5 a.m.? 5.30. I got home at 5.30. How did you get home? I Ubered. Oh, I would have picked you up, but I didn't wake up to your text. My yeah, bad. it's okay. I figured you'd be out. And plus, I felt bad burdening you. Anyway, so I get back there, and then they give me a CAT scan. And uh, I had a gallstone stuck in my gallbladder, but I, I had the double whammy. So not only was it stuck in the gallbladder, inflaming the gallbladder, BC, but they told me the reason why I was experiencing so much pain is because it was actually, they could see it pressing into the liver. Oh, dude, so I, I texted my wife, um, you know, to be like, don't be alarmed, but I was in the hospital and Luke's going to make it. And she was like, and when I said gallstone, she was like, oh my God, this guy's going to be in so much pain. Like, yeah, this it was gonna... bad. It was fucking horrible. Yeah. Um, so anyway, they, uh, it began, they think it moved a little bit. But they can still see it there. So they said a bit, two things are going to happen. One, they'll just pass it, in which case, no big deal. Wait, wait. To pass it, does that mean through your 
Urethra? Um, Ure- I guess. Ureter? I, they, they did not make it thing. They, they told me that if it passes, it won't. It'll, it might be uncomfortable, but not not excruciating. So not like a kidney stone. Not like it was yesterday. No. Um, but what they basically said was, if it doesn't move by the time you get home, because here's what they said. They said if it if this happens, if you get tomorrow and you're like this, we're going to cut you open. Like we're just going to take it out. That's that's. I was like, damn it, I do not want to get fucking surgery on this trip. That's well, the good the great news is this is Connecticut, not Florida, so you would get great health care. The bad news is the hospital here near here is Norwich. I don't really think anyone wants to get yeah. cut open at the at the Norwich hospital. And um, I just I, I don't I don't want to have surgery away from my family. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and you're like, look, if I'm going to die, let me die with my. By own. the way, that's. They, they fucking scared me because I'm sitting there. They gave me the narcotic, and I'm thinking, okay, this is fine. I'll be all right. You know, I feel better. And they go, yeah, we're going to give you a CAT scan. I'm like, oh, like precautionary. They're like, oh, we just need to make sure we know if this needs to be a surgical intervention or not. And I'm like, wait, surgery's on the table for this shit? Anyway, so. So do they take an x ray of your pelvis? A CAT scan of my whole, from like my chest to my pelvis. And it was a guy nurse, not a, not a woman? It was a female nurse. So she was probably Ooh, looking at the x rays of the get, old Hawkins. Hawk, Hawk in science. Brazil, they call the, the Heecher Hound. Did you get that? No, <laughs> no. Dude, I was so out of it, I could barely move. But anyway, um,. So they come back to me. They're like, "Well, the good news is that the good news and bad news is blah blah blah." So basically, they'll just as the, the, uh, here's where we are uh, today. If I don't have another flare up, as soon as I go home, I have to contact a surgeon there to see if they want to get it taken out, or I'm going to get another flare up here. In which case, if I go back to that hospital, they have promised me they're going to cut it out, or it passes. But uh, basically, as soon as I get home, I have to contact the surgeon. Dude, I didn't know because we're old. So that's why I didn't know what was going to happen next. Like, I, was this going to become Morning Campbell, like a one-man show moving forward? Like, I was really nervous. I mean, not even to mention the serious parts of, like, your family and stuff. But I was, yeah. you know, you're you're my quarterback, Luke, okay? I feel you, bro. You're my quarterback. Right. So, But anyway, here was the worst part. Fucking asshole. So finally, <laughs> so finally they discharged me. I'm feeling better. And I, I couldn't go straight home. I had to go to a 24-hour CVS, right, to get the... To get the Percocet. They gave me a Percocet. And uh, the Uber picks me up. And, like, there was one Uber I had to wait, like, 15 minutes for. And I don't know where you... If you're watching this, I don't know where you live in the country. But in where I live in D.C., the most you'll ever wait for an Uber, and I'm talking about the most you'll ever wait, is six minutes. Like, usually it's one to three minutes. They're, they're everywhere, okay? This one was 18. I was like, mother fuck. Um, I was a little surprised that you were able to get one. Yeah. I've had times in Connecticut where I was like, okay, I'm close enough to Hartford. It's five in the morning, but I'm looking to get an airport ride to the airport. And no, no, Zip. Nothing, nothing. So anyway, I got lucky. And uh, the guy who picked me up was playing Usher. Uh, you got it. You want it bad. If you're blah, blah, open. blah. See, I was open for it. Yeah, no, none of that. And he was blasting it so fucking loud. But I saw that the CVS was like two miles away, and then Mohegan was another three. Do you I was think like, your I'm Uber driver like the weekend's halftime show? Uh, he'd be an eligible candidate for it. <laughs> anyway, got my Percocet, got home, took it. All right, I was shot. I'll, I'll give. I'll shout you out now. I'll shout. I'll cut you off to shout you out, Luke. You showed a lot of guts, all right? You texted me before. I didn't think you should have done that show because it wasn't one show. We were part of the two-hour Bellator reveal show or however long it went. Then we did a live hour interview show. Then we did a sit-down with Coker and Espinosa inside the Bellator cage, which was all cool as hell. And now we're doing this, Luke, in which typically we drink. I'm glad you're not drinking. Okay, I'm on antibiotics. Luke. How did you um, How did you bite down and do this, Luke? I'm not kidding. Um. Look, man. Is this it, bloody sock? Is this the flu this game? It's the flu game. It's the flu. I mean, here's honestly, it sounds like over dramatic, but it's really the truth. Probably <laughs> I feel better with the narcotics. But the other part is, dude, like, think about where Bellator and Strike Force, excuse me, Strike Force and Showtime were 10 years ago, you know? I wasn't anywhere close to having this job. And here it is 10 years later, and I finally got an opportunity, you know, unless I was totally incapable of doing it. Damn. Look, man, I don't get oppor- you don't get opportunities like this. I've been waiting over 10 years to do what we did today, basically. <laughs> And you know I'm not going to wait another ten. So and by the way, I'm so glad that you did it. Not only for we're, what we're building at MK for the whole Viacom CBS family, but that interview show we did was we were at the peak of our powers. That was fun. It was a car wash of one big Bellator name waiting on deck after the other, and um, yeah, it was all kinds of fun, Luke. So congratulations to you for Thanks. gutting it out. You're more of a man than I am. No, you'd be if you're feeling like me, you would have done it too. I mean, you if you what you probably should have said to them is just go through with the three needles right now, right? While I'm here, just take just, my ball. Just <laughs> just tape me up, right? Um, our producer sent us these questions. What do you want to do? Oh, so anyway, what was the rest of our day? So we got down there. We did the we didn't really do the rehearsal. 
But we talked to Morrow. Morrow was here. I love that man. Morrow's the best. He's the fucking man. Um, we did the announcement stream, and then we did our own stream, and then we had a roundtable that was recorded with Steven Espinosa and Scott Coker. Very business heavy, but good stuff about yeah. the future, you know. And then now this, and then this is the last thing we're doing. Today. Don't forget when you asked about Valerie Laredo's DMs. That was that was hilarious. I like how you think that's a weird question, bro. You don't think it goes super fucking weird in there? And Yo, you, bro, you I asked Luke it? Rockhold, and then he was just like, he gave me that like, you know. Oh, he's told me about his DMs. Can you imagine what we got? I mean, at the time that I asked him about it, you had women throwing themselves at him. I mean, do you think someone in La- oh, you know what I loved by the way about that Loretta interview the best was that she looked right at you and she said, "Joanna is like an idol to me." Yeah, and it was like she knew, and she, you were- like, she knew our meta bullshit, you know. And you were, and you were out there. Uh, hang on, uh, you were out there. Like looking at me in the face, like mm-hmm. yeah. My- <laughs> no, I actually was like, actually, she's one of my idols too, and that did you did not like that look. I, I thought I activated the gall a gallstone when I said that. You might have. I had a, a bit of a moment. It's cool. Uh, she's friendly, man. I've had her in the studio before. You know, to her, you know, her Instagram is a giant thirst trap. But uh, you're not wrong about that. You know, it's just what it is. It's fine. But honestly, in person, she's a pro. Like she's out here trying to do it. You know, how good is she going to get? I don't know. We'll see. Well, you know when I always say things like Eddie Hearn, Dana White. If you're going to use car sales, me like at least tell me the truth, right? Like if you're going to fuck me over as a fan, just tell me. Like you know, if you're freaking, ma- hey Dana, if you're making Connor Dustin three, just be honest and tell us, right? Yeah. She's Valerie Loretta is creating online thirst traps, but she's just free about it. She's like, "This is who I am. I don't care what you think." Yeah, I know, and I love the du- like. Who are the dudes who complain about that? That's not the weird. Like, I mean, straight dudes complaining about her doing like. <laughs> what, help me understand what the downside is. I've never understood this. Oh, she's going to get uh, opportunities uh, she shouldn't get. I'm like, well, you're complaining that she's doing this and she's getting fights that are too easy for her. I did want to ask her about. She the one criticism she gets I, I could give it back to her is when she celebrates the winning of the fight over the fall. Because she opponent. fucking dances. No, no, d- she's essentially dancing like over the dead body. You know what I mean? Or like kind of. You know what I mean? Like I, there's like yeah, I, she doesn't walk across the cage. And yeah, she does it right there. Like I don't care what you. But again, I I do like the sort of like fuck you. I don't care what you think. You know, you're gonna you're gonna enter my sir my thirst. And trap. also, I, I mean, I don't know if this is true for the last fight she had, but I think a couple of them have definitely been other opponents who were like. She ain't shit. She's a pretty face. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, you go knock them the fuck out. Yeah. I mean, I don't listen. It's low level enough where it doesn't affect the top of the division. So it's not like getting in the way of anything, you know, and, and dudes complaining about the, I mean, I just couldn't even imagine a situation where you would look at this and be like, this is, this is disreputable, prurient content. This that is I Latina. Have no yeah. Uh, the, the second most you were upset at me during that live interview stream was when I asked Austin Vanderford about Britain Hart. You were like, can we get out of this interview I, I will, already? Because I will say this, dude. It's like, dude, if you're Austin Vanderford, every fucking interview is about your wife. He, he expects that and he welcomes I, okay, it. Okay. Okay. You're right. You're, you're, he's you're a good a, dude, by the way. He's a great dude. You're a thousand percent right. But I'm like, dude, of these two, he's the much better fighter. He seems genuinely interesting in his own right. Uh, he's friendly. Can we go? Can we do one fucking interview? We don't ask him. Yeah, about his can fight? we just ask him about the damn eyeball on his Adam's apple the whole time? Dude, he got blasted on his throat. I was shocked. I was shocked. Um, who else was cool? You know, uh, Pico's cool. Well, yeah, hold on. I mean, if you're gonna start this off, y'all remember it was front and back. Y'all remember the open was amazing, dude. You but- fucking had the line of the night. <laughs> when you looked him in the face and you were like, rem- you were like, you're like, you well, uh, I love you. I'll see you soon, boy. And then you told him, and I didn't know if he was going to get this part. Then you go, go, go. And it took him a second to process, but then he got it, and he fucking died laughing. Dude, he's a great he guy. He is incredible. The thing I love about Yoel Romero, and this is even when I didn't interview him at Scrums in the UFC or one-on-one at Media Day, and he had no idea who I am. Luke, he will hug the shit out of you. He will go chest to chest. He's got big fucking mitts, too. Did you notice that? Yeah, oh, hell yeah. And then we ended up seeing him on the way back to the uh, hotel room out in the hallway. Yeah. Tonight, yeah. And he was like all up like boys with us. Like, where are we going to the club? You know, he's like, where do the high school girls hang out? And I'm like, bro, in our room, yo. Donde esta las mujeres? But so as great as he was, and he was great, we closed with Patricio Pitbull Frede. Frede? Frede? I know. Frede. Friere. Um, This guy's the best. He's the best. Luke, I love the shit out of Patricio Friere. One of the lines, the, the video is up right now. One of the lines was like, 
BC was like, you know, you, you're intimidating. You like to intimidate your opponents. And he was like, yeah, me and my brother, we like to go kill people. <laughs> He's like, we want to. He's like, we want to like, kill. You fight people. with a chip on your shoulder. Do you like get off on anger? And they're like, yeah, we're, we're trying to kill you. Yeah, we there, want, you know? we want, we want to hurt you substantially. I was, I was like, with my drink. And then I'm like, all right, he's kind of, you know, he's kind of feeling it. He's hearing our English well. He's responding in English really well. And then I'm like, uh, you happy with Mike Chandler? And he's like, that bitch, right? He's like that guy is fucking bitch. <laughs> that old bitch. So that part was great, but um. Um, I did have to ask permission to call him a savage because I never know, Luke. Did I was that, did I have another risen situation by accidentally calling him a savage? Oh, I see. Because he's Brazilian. Yeah. Oh, uh, I didn't think of it that way. That's why I was like, bro, I'm saying this as a compliment. Yeah, yeah, he was I, like, yeah. He was like, fuck yeah, I'm a savage. You know. That, but that word is so universal at this point that it's uh, you know, it's a fair thing to be concerned about after you were like, oh, a ching ching chong, oh, oh, oh. First, and I was like, oh my god, what is he doing? I was just like. <laughs> I know you karate chopped the air, and you're like, dude, I can't believe they're mad. I'm like, eh. Anyway, um, the probably the best part was when Eric Albarracin. Uh, he's he, he Albarracin. He's Colombian. Oh, you he's, a, he's American. You should have spoke uh, Colombian with I him. I don't know if he speaks Spanish. Uh, um, if he, he's a weirdo, but. Uh, his dad, his <laughs> I love, dad. I love how he's just like, well, he's actually a weirdo, but yeah. His dad is uh, Colombian. So he always talks about going to Colombia uh, with me every time I see him. Um, so here's what I'm saying, okay? So Albert Racine was holding court, wearing the fur, and being awesome. We're talking about Cejudo. You ask if Henry got fat. And then, uh, I, you know, again, I figured I'd just roll the dice on Pitbull. I'm like, yo, bro, you know, I think you could take Cejudo. And he's like, no, no, it's my friend, my friend, you know? And he's then, like, but uh, he know, he know. But, you know, but he goes, he know, though. <laughs> I mean, this guy's a killer, right? He's he's pretty he's different man he's got a he's got a he's something I don't know he, he he's intense he's like I have no he's hobbies just, I like to fight I mean, yeah he's like I like to kill <laughs> uh, we were asking his his hobbies he's like I like to kill I like to maim I like to disfigure I'm like. Do you like to paint? Uh, are you into photography? <laughs> I know. Hey, hey, uh, Fedor, what's your favorite Russian novels? All right. Hey, listen, fuck you, guy. So yeah, um, well, no, but this look, this interview special is well worth your time since we should use this to advertise our stuff, Luke. Um, I had a great time chatting. I was like Bader. Good, good quote. Pico was real. You know, he was fun. He was real. He talked about his horse's dong. Um. Oh, then you were complimenting Doug Lima's teeth. That got a little weird, you know? Yeah, I mean, you didn't see those teeth. Those are the best-looking teeth I'd ever seen. I mean, this dude, I think he had veneers or something. I could be wrong. I don't know. But he had an incredible smile. I mean, dude, you can't have a smile like that and me not say a good thing about it. Okay. I, he, didn't get a little, he, he got a little shy about it, but, you know. I and then uh, we almost got uh, James Gallagher in trouble. Well, you're like, yo, how much infidelity are you involved in in Ireland? I mean, I didn't say that in that way, though. You know, it was just sort of like, bro, I mean, the chicks love this Jabana. Well, I think we know this, you know? And then and he was like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> yeah. and he's like, no, no, no. And then when he left, he uh, he put he put the microphone down. He goes, dude, you're going to get me hung. Oh, God. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure he, he will end up being hung, you know? Yeah. Okay. You're weird. <laughs> you're weird. Um, what else happened today? Uh, I think Scotty Cox likes us, Uncle Scott. You know? we, we talked about it to Aaron Pico about the size of his horse's dick. That's true. <laughs> just, we we, just, we literally, I think not only that, I think we started the conversation. There. We're like, so here's Aaron Pico, a top-ranked 145-er whose who's horse has a monstrous fucking cock and balls. <laughs> and, he's, and he was looking at us like, he was kind of into it, he was kind of smiling. Yeah, he was like, you But right, the, the right. same dude, he's like... Okay, <laughs> nice to see you. How are you, gentlemen? I guess. In fact, my horse is as long as enormous. <laughs> oh, wow. So, um, are you going to tell the people about the, the lecture you felt the need to twice give me about, you know, who, you know, BC, it's fine if you're going to, you know, crack dick jokes with Pico. That's fine. But, like, when we interview Coker and Espinosa, you know, you, bro, you cannot do that. I'm like, really? Well, you know, far be it for me to assume the worst, but. Uh, you got to talk about MK strengths, dude. MK strengths. When it's time to joke, we joke. But when it's time to really nail people with the analysis, yes, that's that. You got to do that part too. It's, blow my nose. That's fine. It's not. It's not one or the other. And sometimes you got to make sure we haven't lost sight of that. That's all. Yep. The uh, medicine I took is starting to kick in a little bit here. Feeling a little. How are you? You got that AIDS? 
You have COVID, bitch? No. If you give me COVID at the end of this trip, <laughs> while my gallbladder is about to shoot through my body, <clears throat> I will be upset. I will. I have to say, though, like, genuinely from a fan standpoint, you know, I'm excited for a lot of the fights, but the one that, like, has everybody buzzing is this Rumble Romero fight, dude. Like, legitimately... That has just got fucking bananas written. Dude, we have no idea what that's going to look like. And even if you were the ultimate cynic and was like, well, dude, you thought, PC, you thought Romero Adesanya was going to bang and it didn't. What if Yoel does it? Even if Yoel does that exact same thing again, let's say he was able to pull that off. I just want to see what this looks like. I want to see Rumble cock that right hand and exactly. just, you know, and and what what Joey or Yoel was kind of telling us both on and off camera, Luke, when we kind of made references to, you know, Rumble's freaking, you know, knockout artist and you're coming up and wait, Yoel. Dude, he was like, bring him, bring him the fuck to me. You know what I mean? That, that like, he's intense, man. That intensity that he showed in that, like, he, that look he gave me when I was like off camera, I was like, you know, dude, Rumble fucking bangs. Are you, you going to be okay with this? And he was just like, fuck is wrong with you i know so that's a, see that's a question i would never ask well that was a that was a uh i was loosening him up with yeah that. yeah yeah. oh no I, i'm not saying it, like it's bad what i mean to say is um sometimes it's good to get an approach you wouldn't necessarily take and i think he appreciated the lighthearted one in the end for sure um yeah so then we spoke to a bunch of other people um we had a round table in the cage that was cool with uh it was me, Steven Espinosa, Scott Coker, and then BC on the end. Did you like that? That was fun. That was a lot of fun though. It was the, cool with the way it was shot with high the production values there from Showtime. Um so that we were in we were on the circular fighting platform, only the backside of the circle cage was it was intact and uh you know, that's that, as close as we're ever going to get to being in the octagon for any redeemable reason. Except for like if you're behind the curtain at a cage. UFC weigh-in and, and the octagon's there and there's like usually Lorenzo and his kids jumping in there. Like one of those moments you could jump in, but you'd be an asshole. If you yeah, yeah, exactly. No, that was cool. That was a big day for us. But this is the type of shit I've been looking forward to, looking to trying to do for a long time. Not, not just this. I mean, I like the other stuff that we do as well. Um, I want to do like more studio level <clears throat> uh, technique stuff, which is just not really an option at the moment, but... I'm wait, this was I'm a wait, great, I've been waiting for this shit for a while. I'll tell you man. what. I, this is my favorite. Th what we did today. Dude, we had that desk we had was fucking nice. The interview gauntlet we did today and have it, doing it on a desk with multiple cameras is you know even better, right? But that interview gauntlet, which you know you were saying you've done in Super Bowl media days, I've done at you know big time boxing events or WrestleMania or whatever, where it's just like you don't know who's coming around the corner, but you have a general idea. It's like legends or whatever, and you, just got, you get yeah, ten go. seconds or twenty seconds to kind of be like, okay, let me think what what's going to make this interesting. That was us at the peak of our powers. Uh, with, and that was the first time we got a chance to do something like that, and that was fun, Luke. Okay, I've been waiting a long time for that, bro. A long time, a long time. Yeah, and I've been luckier than I've been luckier than almost everyone. You know, there's just a handful of dudes who have done more stuff than I than you you and I have. It's not it's in the MMA space, dude. There's literally you could handpick a couple of people who have done um, more than we've done in terms of the live event stuff. And frankly, I don't want to do stuff on Fight Night where I'm like backstage. I did that with Glory, and I was terrible at it, and I didn't like it. I want to do more like studio stuff. But you know, this is what I'm talking about. Like, the, the, like I couldn't get I couldn't give this up. I, I would have to be under the knife to have given this up today. You know, plus Showtime has like put so much faith in us. And you know, I've, I've most of my career is having people who employed me who are like you know nominally interested in the things i could do but not really and here's showtime being like okay boys like you know every time the keys to the kingdom get open a few more doors you know dude anyone who's had a cup of coffee with showtime like we've been lucky to have seems to have that same reaction you know even with compared to so many of the other major companies but um i'm very happy luke i'm about to re-sign at cbs sports okay yeah dude that is so big so uh our deals don't quite align but they mostly align so that that's coming up in march what i mean by that is the timing sorry Going to get that finalized, and um, yeah, Showtime's great. Um, I get, you know, that gig I do for NBC Sports on the side, Luke, the yeah. uh, the uh, Ring City we Boxing. Eat, we have to eat the boiled eggs that are sitting in. The yeah, back. I get three trips to Puerto Rico in March. Three, bro. Two. You've been to Puerto Rico? No. Oh, you're gonna love it, man. You know, Puerto Rico's obviously had its challenges because it's been mismanaged by the United States, and obviously even beyond that, just you know the natural disasters that they've had to endure and whatnot. Have you been a bunch? Uh, I've only been once, actually, but I fell in love with my wife in Puerto Rico. Dude, Puerto Rico is a special place, man. So we, I, people treat it like it's like the a forgotten, th like oh, you know, Puerto Rico's kind of always there, but it's not really all that attractive. I mean, again, yes, it's had its challenges. You will see that, but dude, they are they are a resilient people, man, and they're trying to rebuild. My wife went down there for work, and she was telling me like just how much like any kind of tourism meant to them. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, they had gotten banged by the storms, you know, the last couple of major storms. Yeah, right? and again, like, the U.S. hasn't just done a great job <clears throat> of managing you know, the yeah. place. So what I'll say is when you go down, if you get, I know it's COVID and shit, but if you get any free time, you will see, like, like Puerto Rican, like, when you go there as a, as a tourist, their hospitality is, like, fucking first rate the we people got, are friendly we have three different locations that we're uh, setting up a ring one of them i think is in like old town san juan so that, I'm which get is a, absolutely spectacular i'm gonna get a great great tour of the island so i'm looking forward to it um that that is one of you know it's one of the best fan bases in boxing like by far the yeah. pa- like the passion I have, I have to warn you though okay so you're, you're probably be staying in san juan right i i have known nothing at this okay point. if one you go to san juan it'll you'll hear a lot of spanish but you'll hear a lot of english too and you go to any any vendor there if they're going to speak english okay buddy you drive one hour outside that city, <laughs> and you can forget that shit. The rules are very different outside of San Juan. I drove when I was there by myself to Caguas, and this is before I'd really taken any Spanish. I didn't hardly know anything. And I remember I parked at the town square with my car, and I needed to break a dollar to get quarters for the meter. And I went, and this was like a like a nice town square. It was like well maintained. There was no potholes. So you're you're taking care of yourself. You're not with like a tour group or anything. You're completely. I was by myself. I was on a on a business trip, and uh, I went into a store after store trying to get a dollar for my quarters, and they they didn't know any English, Z- zero English. And I was like, wow, okay. So I was I did I thought it'd be much more common throughout the island. My experience was that that was not the case. All right, I'm going to put them to the test, all right? <laughs> I'm coming for you, Puerto Rico, so let's do that. Um, so, Luca, uh, I mean, look, we don't, we're don't, we not really told. We don't know what's coming, but you'd have to believe a, a good run of Showtime boxing fights are on the horizon, too. So this is a fun time. Broner's supposed to be the next one? I think that's February 20th, and I know uh, you know it feels like we're close to getting... Do you know who the fuck he's fighting? Yeah, it was a replacement guy. It was a, it was a guy you never heard of, a guy that he should beat up, but... You know, he kind of needs us. He needs a, a yeah, win that no, he, he, that he can come back bad, and yeah. chalk trash and look good and do his dances. And, and uh, yeah, he needs, because look, he does, he does match himself tough. You got to give him that. You know, and he, yeah, he always loses when the he steps fight, up. fight, you know, okay. But, you know, he, he yeah. Um, I told you, I saw, I felt bad because I saw someone on one of his comments being like, AB, he was supposed to be like about billions. And then someone, someone wrote, I felt bad, but I laughed. <laughs> Because he puts his cash app thing up there, <laughs> the guy wrote, "Always begging." <laughs> I felt bad for laughing. Yeah, yeah, dude, I, I always have a soft spot for AB. I'm always gonna just uh, think he's that done he's, some. He's done some. He's done some reprehensible things. He, he really has. I don't know why. You know, there's. I don't know. There's certain athletes or artists, or whatever. You're like, they can never do anything to break my heart, right? Oh, that's what we need on the. You know, what we need. You know what the show doesn't have enough of technical difficulties. <laughs> that's really. We just uh, can't get enough Luke, of that. Do you want to talk about that or no? Well, I, people have been asking about what has happened since that disaster in, back in Jersey City, and I keep telling them the, the the truth, which is, isn't the documentary supposed to handle most of this? Yeah, I think we're supposed to see. They push the date back a little, but I think we're supposed to see. This full disclosure, a, a completely rough edit of the whole thing in like two days from now and then that could lead to full uh finished version next week I which think, is great I think, I think we wait i think we yeah. wait yeah because i don't want to ruin that yeah dude are you like burping and farting right now yeah I'm okay because it smells like a dead body over here yeah remember i nearly died yesterday yeah, i know I and know. my body is expelling i things. mean can't like i don't know like i would have a lot more respect for you if you just died in your sleep like a real man right just <laughs> Just turn in this video to Mikey, <laughs> and then go die. <laughs> you have you have you have lived through your usefulness. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, um, Luke, do you have um, you know our paychecks notwithstanding here, our job and all that? Just as Luke the fan, um, bro, you feeling the state man tournament? Feeling the tournament? Um, you know, I think one side of the bracket is a lot more exciting on paper than the other one, which I think is fair to say. Um, yeah, I'm mostly curious to see to what extent Showtime can elevate the Bellator brand, because you can take like Strike Force out of it for just a second, you know. Um, Bellator's major problem on DAZN was there was probably a number of issues, but for me, for you, it was Mike Goldberg. Uh, these issues remain ongoing, but no, no. In all seriousness, um, they never had anyone telling their stories. Like you never saw a great DAZN piece 
that uh, really captured your heart and imagination and told this incredible epic tale of why a fight was happening. Well, if they did, you wouldn't have seen it most. Yeah, exactly. If they did, it was probably behind the paywall. There's just a lot of problems with the being the company put in part. Like, you can put on good fights, but if no one is really selling them to you in a interesting way or packaging them in an interesting way, there's just a lot lost during that time. Showtime has a proven... Um, this is just true. It's You know, you can say who's better, who's worse, but they have a proven ability to be able to, to tell stories. Um... You know, I wonder what that will do for Bellator's brand. I'm curious to see what happens there. You know, um, because part of it is like stories need to be told, but the other part is, you know, MMA is not in the same place it was when Strike Force was at its let's say relative peak. Where you're still trying to explain the sport to people, and then also, you know, it was. This is not quite true because after the fact, people began to accept that Strike Force had a really talented roster when all those guys came over and started kicking ass. But just in terms of like ranked people, I I, I, mean, I have to look this up to be certain, but I think Strikeforce had more certainly than Bellator has. Um, and you know, dude, Bellator's been bouncing around, and it's a lot, you know, uh, the brand is ready, I think, to be leveraged more than it um, ever has. But this is like a big upgrade for them. Monster. This is big news, like straight up big news, you know, no matter who you care about or work for or anything, or just as a fan, it's huge. That eight man tournament, it's sexy, it's really good. Luke, when was the first time you liked Bellator? Meaning, not when did you start watching, but when did you think they were like legit? Like when Askren was on top and fighting those dudes? Were well, I've always, I've, I think I've always understood their place in terms of the, the size of the organization. But, you know, when I really began to, um, I don't know when it was, but there's like Shabalat Shamhalayev, um, Frodo Hospalayev. Like they were one of the first guys to really start recruiting some of the folks out of Dagestan and Russia. You know, dude, Kreshkov was a badass. Yeah. My first cut. But there's, a, but there's a bunch of other guys you never heard of who are also the two, the two I mentioned from 145 were Shabalat Shamhalayev and Frodo Hospalayev. Um, they were just really good at that. I remember it was during Bjorn Rebney's era, so it was pre Coker. Um, and I noticed that like guys I thought would kill in the tournaments got fucking whooped. And I was like, you know, I don't know that this is a sustainable product, but if you like MMA. There's a little too much Joe Warren on the screen back then. Yeah, I mean, look, there's a lot of that shit, you know, and and, uh, guys who you knew were like well beneath the standard UFC level. Um, But it's been a while. I've liked them for a while, but there's been a couple. It's just, you know, they need consistency. They need, they need uh, visibility. There's just a lot of things. I think they need more morning combat, Luke. I want to keep our brand as, you know, not intertwined with any promotion as possible. That's fair. That's fair. I actually don't want to do that. I mean, you know, I'd like, I, people, have, by the way, we should talk about this. People have asked us, what does this mean for us going forward? Like, are y'all going to be on Bellator broadcast? And my answer is, we have no idea. Literally beyond what has happened today, we don't have any clue if there even is anything else we'll ever do. We hope. What do you say to the people who write in the comments, oh, great, this means BC and Luke will never tell the truth about where Bellator stands in light of UFC. We don't, I don't work that. for Bellator. I get my, my CBS cuts my check. Trust me. CBS we is have the same grandfathers or, or daddies, right? Yeah, okay, I'll be friendly. But I'm not, gonna, I'm, not, I'm not going to fucking lie. I'm not lying for any promoter. I'm not lying. I'm not losing everything I've built. So I can be, you know, uh, to protect I'll be friendly, but to protect Jared Shaw, you know, Scala, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah, and here's here's the other part: hold us to account, dude. I'm not afraid of people holding us to account. Hold us to account. Oh, hey, you guys were too soft on them, or whatever. Okay, but th- please, the only way we ever get better is if we get feedback from people who are honestly trying to get us to do the best job possible. So you think they ever told Sofredi he was too soft? Never. <laughs> that probably has rarely <laughs> happened. He's such a filthy old bitch, too. I was watching one of his videos not long ago. I told you about this. And what he made them do. Ugh, I was like, you fucking gross animal. <laughs> I can't talk about this on camera, Luke. I mean, come on. No, I'm not going to say what it was. But I've got a career. We're going to ruin that. But this is the point we're trying to explain to folks, too. It's like doing the podcast is fun. Like, I like doing it. But... Honestly, the like what Morning Combat is supposed to be is a lot of what you saw today. Po- there was no fights today, but post fight shows on location, being a part of grander things. The show is designed to be really much more profile than just a. Th- 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 and again, all the podcast episodes are important, but you know that's. It- well, it also allows us to di- diversify to the level, Luke, where 
you could end up being into morning combat for different reasons and um but at the same time at the end of the day like any good rock band or something like we want to be able to do it all we want to be able to write you the ballad and rock out and jam so um you know i'm perp- you know i'm into why am i into morning combat because i'm trying to let the world know luke it's a sitcom it's not a talk show right but to, to you and a lot of the they don't care about that they want the fucking take they want a hard ass take on some mma right <laughs> you know what i mean so um, they want that lex the impaler <laughs> take yeah so uh, wow <laughs> <laughs> You ever seen his joint? Oh, oh my God. I can't I mean, it. it's so long. The, the, the camera can pan from one side of the screen to the other, and you'll see squirrels running along it, <laughs> birds posted on it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Remember I told you I saw Cliff Robinson, our RIP, his dong in the uh, Nets locker room? Yeah, just an absolute just, specimen. I mean, just, I mean, yeah. There were female reporters standing next to him. He goes from zero to ball back in like a second. <laughs> I mean, just for no reason. You think but, he did it on purpose? Oh, a hundred percent. hundred percent. But I think that's the... um. That's so gross. That's pretty gross. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty hey, gross. Uh, you know who I saw today? Uh, all seriousness, you know who I saw today? She was here taking uh, photos. Esther Lynn. Esther Lynn was here. So I don't know. I asked her too. I was like, "What does this mean for you going forward?" Obviously, Showtime's going to use her in some capacity to take photos for MMA events. Every one of them, every once in a while. She's a legend. Knows? By the way, she's a, she's an. I like the term like active legend or living legend, meaning like. You know what I mean, right? Frankie Edgar's a freaking living legend. Yeah. Esther Lynn's a living legend. Yeah, she kind of is. Uh, it's like you're the best to ever do this, and you're still out here, like, young, you know? Um, but that was cool, so I talked to her for a while. She's doing really well. Again, we, all of this is up in the air. We may not have any role. We honestly just don't have a clue. So my hunch is we'll absolutely be <coughs> on location for big Bellator fights, right? In some capacity? Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, uh, a lot of what we do for CBS Sports HQ, I mean, that's all under the same, the, you know, they, they cover Bellator very extensively as well. I think well, they so. carried the uh, presser today. Yes, yes. Scott Coker went on, did a live interview right afterwards. So, um, it, yeah, I mean, look, big. it's like big things are coming, Luke. I don't know exactly which door is going to open first, but, I mean, once the COVID clears up a bit, we haven't had MK at full power, you know, in a non-COVID environment yet where – we are hitting the road for Conor McGregor's return, and we are giving it to you all week long. Yeah, you know? yeah. This should be or fun. Canelo versus Charlo down the road, Luke, okay? Yeah, and I like how every, every time uh, people see us on, like, an elevated roll, they're like, you two YouTube losers growing up. <clears throat> but, uh, no, people send well wishes, man. It was cool. It was cool to see. You know, because we're usually out there, you know, what are you going to say? You could say you like my takes. You could say you, you don't. But what are you going to say? I didn't pay my dues? You know? Fuck you yes yeah, i did fuck you bro you know yes i did i have waited plenty for a turn so pretty pumped about it i love when people think this is the first year i've ever watched big martial arts lose <laughs> <laughs> i mean i get i'm a filthy cash to a degree but yeah. you know i have been covering this sport for this is my ninth year yeah. and you know it's but uh yeah, I, get I did. I did watch UFC four on pay per view, but you know this is my first you know year. I'm the boxing guy. Yeah, I'm actually surprised. Like I'm obviously the MMA guy on the boxing side of things because I just have so much. Been over a million times. I have so much. I have to. I have to make up for for lost time. Um, but it's like, dude, you've been covering MMA for like a decade or more or a decade. Um, I became not watching, but like actively doing things. I was I was the backup ESPN.com MMA editor beginning in 2012. I wrote some MMA stories over the next few years for ESPN. Okay, so more or less about a decade. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I did. I interviewed fighters in the locker room for Sports Center after UFC 200. That was a, that That's was fun. a, uh, that was a great. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So it's like I, I'm, I'm a little surprised at that that that, that, that there's that the reputation somewhat lingers. It's not that bad. Most people realize those are your fans, Luke. Okay, I don't need those fans. Yeah, there's some people who are like, uh, Luke, I love you. Uh, Brian's okay. Yeah. <laughs> what, what time's that STEM concert later? Yeah, that's. But you know, the, you get a bunch of them who would you know love you who want me to die. So you know. I don't think that's. I don't think that happens. See, if they love you, they clearly want me to die. If they, oh, there's a little bit of that. I don't think it's ever like you know. I'm a huge PC fan and fuck Luke, right? I, I bet there is a little bit of that, but that, not too much. But to your point, that's something for everybody. Is this sort of the idea? We are washed, bro. There's no, there's the, oh, we should get to these questions. Yeah, why don't you ring the bag, ring the bang a, a few times on that? Right, Rat tat tat that ass, right? All right. Question BC: What are your top three favorite regional foods? Examples: Philly cheesesteak, Chicago New York style pizza, Memphis Kansas City. Slash, t- I mean, he's, he's putting uh, yeah. barbecue types, but yeah. It, I mean, it is. I've had 
life-changing barbecue in Austin. Is Austin considered on the level of a Memphis and the Did other you go one? To Salt Lake? Memphis and Kansas City? No, but I went to the Stubbs Sunday uh, Gospel Brunch, yes, bar- which is just yeah. freaking light. But I mean, just... People, people think... Uh, I had barbecue in Austin as well. Jeremy Botter took me to some place that, like, you have to stand in line for. I, I went to that place. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, like, the, you, people think you're overselling the barbecue. No, no, no. no it's <laughs> it's like I've had good cooks. This is like they. It's almost perfect. And it's like perfect. I, I put New Haven Pizza into this conversation. I, I actually. You know what? Here's the thing. I want to shit on you for that. But I have heard that Connecticut pizza is really good. Oh, it's insane! I mean, New York pizza is a thing, but I, I think it's a sp- it's a spinoff of of the greatness that starts in New Haven. And I'm not even a New Haven thin sliced guy. I'm more of the. Do you ever have Greek pizza? It's just pizza made by Greeks. Italian pizza made by Greeks. They put so much freaking grease and extra cheese. Oh yeah, yeah. it's a thing. Look, the sausage has a different tang to it. Um, I'm more of that than the traditional New Haven style. But New Haven style kicks a lot of ass. Uh, would you throw Philly cheesesteaks in there? Would you show? Would, I, I've not had a good Philly cheesesteak, which is to say I've had a sloppy Philly cheesesteak, and that is good, but I'm told that there are gourmet types of this. Yeah, yeah. I've not had that, I, so I don't have a yeah. frame of reference. I've only done the Pat and Gino thing a couple times. Yeah, I haven't which is like, it's just, you know, it's just... It's, it's, no, it's still good, though. You still yeah, you, you eat like, your face off. Yes, there, but I mean, this is food you could get at a movie theater. It's not... <laughs> wow, that was demeaning as shit, Luke. Why did you just say cumbies, right? Yeah. Uh, it's like juju fruits like i mean you know no i'm serious like dude you've never been to like a how the, the cheese is straight out of like the shit you could get at a movie theater it's the same it's the same stuff <laughs> i didn't think about it that's a really insulting way to talk about someone um all right so regional foods i'll say this i'll say this uh new york pizza is amazing but what about new york bagels see i okay new york bagels this to is me not me like, challenging the rothschilds i know what you're about to say but i've never gotten the appeal of like the Jewish, I mean, all those towns. Like, dude, I've been in like. You've white. never gotten the appeal of a Jewish deli for real. No, no, I could, I could rock with a Jewish deli, but the specifically bagels. It's just not something. I mean, I've had oh, you know, bagels are fine, but I don't look at bagels like a delicacy. Like some people are like, dude, I got to get those. You oh, know, I, I can't eat them because they're, they're terrible for you now. But like, dude, going and getting a thick wheat. Uh, bagel and then slathering that bitch with cream cheese. I'm not saying I, mean, I don't know that earth. bagels are good. I've just I've had these these ones. You know, a lot of the town, the rich New York towns around White Plains, they all are known for their bagels, and you got to try those. And I've, I've had the damn Scarsdale bagels. Okay, it's pretty good, but it wasn't like you know maybe it's, when you come to I'll do this again. When you come to DC, there's this Jordanian. I think they're Jordanian. There's a family that owns a, uh, a bagel place. It's actually not in DC, and I never leave DC for food. I'm like, if it's not here, I'm not going. I make an exception in this one case. It's called Brooklyn Bagel Company, and it's run by this family. Dude, they are the soup Nazis brought down here. When you order it, you better get it loud, clear, and first correct, or they just move right on past you. They don't give a fuck. They make their own bagels in house. You can I see think all the that's machinery. It's an overrated thing okay, nowadays. And I remember the first time I went there, I got a sausage, egg, and cheese, and it was. That, that is the best bagel I've had out of, outside of New York ever in my life. Like the guy who's cooking it ejaculates on it at the end. That's like the final, like, like. Yes, yes, I ate jizz. What was wrong with you? Are you tired? Okay, so New York bagels is good for me. Um, what do you want to say? Like. you, how, you, I can't believe you no sold the ejaculation joke. That was that. Oh, it's it terrible, was just, It's it so was, bad. The timing, the. the how about, um, how about, uh, like, Tex Mex food? Like, you know. The sort of near New Mexico, sort of Texas area. Right? Yeah, I mean, dude, real Mexican food, like real, is it's like out of control. It's insanely good. Yeah. Like, and I mean, that's a rich culture. It's too. hard, even some of the the places in Connecticut that have the towns that have money, so the restaurants are step up. It's hard to find authentic Mexican that's like worth talking about. By the way, I tried to find just as a joke. I was like, I wonder how good the Mexican is in Colombia. Uh, it's terrible. It's not at all good. <laughs> but it has to be where, like, I've, I've grown up in the pizza heartland, right, Luke? Like, New York City style, the New Haven runoff, all that. I grew up 18 miles from New Haven. So I go elsewhere in the country, and I'm like, the pizza out here fucking sucks. And it pretty much does, Luke, outside of, like, four areas in this country. Sure. I've never had that. Um, what was I talking about before that? I never had that happen. I'll have to get back in my brain and get back to you. That medicine's this. working. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> working real good. Oh, that was a great story, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. You, you, you I had a great boy. Metaphor. You really stuck the landing on I that was, one. I was getting there. there. Got to tell you, I was really, you put it all together. That was that was the Kaiser Sose payoff of stories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, how's that? So I've named two. The Tex-Mex area, the New York bagel. Oh, I got it now. I got it now. Uh, I got it now. This ought to be great. <laughs> 
I think that's where I'm at with Mexican because I have not in the uh, like maybe once in the greater New York City, Connecticut have area have I had like the kind of authentic Mexican where I was like, damn, that's good. Like the kind you have in Mexico when you get off yeah, yeah. off the beaten okay, path. Fair you know? enough. Yeah. Uh, how about this? How about the New Orleans like gumbo stuff? See, I, I I've had that and it in the it, beignets are good the too. The pole boys and all that stuff. I think it's boys, I yes. think it's all pretty overrated, but it's also because I'm those categories of food I'm not super Careful. I'm not a massive fish uh you know, seafood guy to a, you know. So I'm not a seafood basics. guy either, but like to me that's the exception to that proves the rule. There's a lot of exceptions in that in that realm that I wouldn't normally eat, but because it's that, you know, it's, it feels special, but still I just think that's overrated. What's your favorite like uh American city to visit if you're gonna party? Austin. Austin? Music scene is just out of control. The diver- You're talking about like pre-COVID or something. Yeah, I'm talking about like in the 2000, early 2000s, but yeah. Austin's great. Um, this, the breakdown when I, I went, what, 04 for the uh, Austin City Limits Festival? The breakdown of like 6th Street is the crazy like close down the street. It's like spring break every night, right? But then if you go down one block, it was like the, careful with the mid-20-year-olds who have jobs. You know, Then the next block, you go down and all the bars were like for 30-year-old people. And then yeah. the next bar no, was... I've, I've been to Austin. I, I just... Um, and every bar has a, a, a kick-ass live band going at all times. Yeah. Nashville's a little bit like that on the countryside. Yeah, I've you never walk experienced that. Their, yeah. You walk down some of the streets, and the, the, if it's the nice weather and their doors are open, you'll hear one angelic voice after the other walking down the street. Uh, but for me, it's got to be New Orleans. New Orleans is a super special place. Man. Yeah, it, it really I went there for WrestleMania, spent seven nights. <laughs> in, uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a sentence I'll never say. <laughs> That was, by the way, the same week that uh, McGregor threw the dolly through the window. So that was that week. Yeah, Um, it was uh, it was pretty good. I I didn't go out at night, but even being out at like eight o'clock when it's dark, the streets in the French Quarter were just insane. And I don't know what I don't know what the hot spots are anymore. But the one one of the times I went with my wife, um, we she had friends there, so she had friends from Colombia that moved to New Orleans. And uh, at the time, I'm sure this has changed, but at the time, this was when like Frenchman Street was the sort of where the locals went in the french quarter and we went to this place that had like this sort of japanese um i don't know almost 50s vibe to it it was kind of weird but it was fucking brilliant and there was jazz musicians playing and like oh god that's it's, so good. it's just new orleans is the fucking best all right uh love the show you two are hilarious together questions luke i remember you saying you were into photography as a hobby here we go uh, what kind do you enjoy shooting landscape portraits cityscapes dude i don't really know the answer to that because i um, I just shoot shit is what it looks yeah, like. I'm just I'm just trying to figure man I'm mostly trying to figure out how the settings on my camera work bro most of the time <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how it pay with a credit card at the damn pump right yeah but here's what I can say I bought a, uh, a lens that was a 70 to 200 focal length I want to see if I can shoot some wildlife so that may end up being what I like but so far it's just like can I just take a good photo or not and you know it's it's more challenging than you might imagine. Uh, there's a part here for UBC, which is... Is that about my painting career, Luke? Have you ever done stand-up or improv? <laughs> no, I have not. Uh, I, I, uh, I would heckle you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I have the, the exact comedy game for that. Yeah, in fact, I know I don't. That's why I wouldn't try something like that. Um, there was a point... I mean, anytime, Luke, if you can make somebody laugh, you think... You know, wow. easy to make your friends laugh. It, it, hard to make strangers uh, laugh. Hard to get out and you know, I mean, you'd be surprised, right? Hard to get out there and have a document, you know, and have a damn comedy special on Showtime. Um, but Luke, uh, <laughs> what I was saying was, I, I I told you the story. It was here at Mohegan Sun. I was the MC for like the Connecticut Boxing Hall of Fame yeah, didn't dinner. Did you bomb in like 2015? And uh, <laughs> Luke, I don't know what I was thinking on the ride there. I was just like, you know what? what you were I, like, dude, you thought you were dice, like hiccupy, <laughs> hiccupy. Dude, I, I I just formed this long form joke like that was going to take a couple minutes and was going to be like real, like crazy ending twist of you know direction of where I was going, and. And uh, you're fine, good, dude. I bombed. I, fucking, I mean, it was like crickets, Luke. I had I bombed so hardcore on this boxing <laughs> joke that uh, I had to go, damn, tough crowd. Is this thing on? And then suddenly everybody started laughing, but it was like penny laughs. It was, you know, it was, it was, I was like, I actually stopped and went, damn, like, like, Luke, uh, I have no business. Uh, oh, that's try, awesome. You know, I mean, I, I think I'm a counter puncher comedically, so I have no chance getting out there and, like, yeah, it's hard. Know, yeah. You got to play off somebody else there. Penn needs a teller, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. That's hilarious. Uh, question BC, have you listened to any music from Brian Fallon or the Gaslight Anthem? I, I have know. not heard of either, it's, but. Um, more Mopey Whites. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> right. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, I'll check that out. Brian Fallon and or, the or the Gaslight the, Anthem. <laughs> I haven't heard of either, but I'll check it out. Okay, thank you very much. I have a new guilty pleasure. We were talking about like music guilty pleasures. Like you're, you know, ashamed to admit. I listened to the Dixie Chick song. Gaslighter, <laughs> denier. Uh, they were cool. Remember when they were cool for like a little bit? And then they shit on Bush in London. And, and then they, and yeah, dude. They, was there was a window that. where they were hot and cool at the same time, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Although they weren't like they fell off hard. Wilson Phillips had a window of being pretty hot too, or at least two of the three, right, Luke? I I'm going to skip that question and uh, go on to the next one, which is. If you got to pick out any bottle of booze you wanted for under one hundred dollars is the price point, and you only get one bottle of it gifted to you, what do you choose? I, I'm not a boozer for hard alcohol, so I can't answer that. What would you go? Could be a bottle of wine, couldn't it? That's true, dude. Okay, so I, 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 my wife drinks red wine all the time. I, I go in and out between that and beer at the rare times that I drink now because I do have old guy disease, where I can get a hangover off of one drink just uh, viciously, but um. Have when you, have you ever st- so I know I know the taste of nine ninety nine bottles of wine fifteen dollars like most of you out there right like I know the taste of that lower cheap level Luke mm-hmm. maybe once in a while a couple times a year I'll buy a twenty five dollar or thirty dollar bottle of wine but and I can taste the difference but whatever and then you go out to a dinner in Vegas when your boss is paying and you get like three hundred dollars bottle of red wine that taste is it's 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 freaking incredible yeah. Luke it's it it is. You taste. Yeah, I've seen those taste tests where it's like, can this expert tell the difference between a five dollar bottle and a fifty? You know, sometimes I get it wrong. But you're right. There's there does come a certain threshold when you reach back to the truly vintage. It, it's just so unmistakably unique. You know, it's it's like sex in a glass. It's amazing. Yeah. And and I know they say there's certain areas in the price range where it doesn't where it doesn't matter as much, Luke. But uh, that's a jump that matters. So maybe I'd get some. Uh, I don't know, Luke. What the hell would you get? A bottle of Jameson or some shit? I would say I would take you. I, okay, without picking a brand, I would say get me as far as a hundred bucks. That's the price point, right? Get me as far as that will get me in Japanese whiskey. You know Japanese whiskey? Yes, I got gifted a bottle of Japanese whiskey from uh, the folks at Ring City USA for for the holidays. Yeah, it's. I mean, you know, they have their junk like any other place does, but um, no, this was legit. But you can get some high end stuff from them that is really well put together. Uh, okay, actually, some decent questions. What was the one you couldn't read? You were like, "I'm not touching this." Luke, what was that one? Uh, I don't know. Oh, there's a porn star one in here. We'll get into a minute. Uh, is Mark Smith low key one of the best MMA referees out there? He never gets talked about as one of the best, uh, but I rarely see him making mistakes. What's it? Yeah, he was on Rogan. I didn't see it though. Did you what see? What does it? he look like? Which guy's that? Uh, he's a black guy, uh, bald, has a mustache. Yeah, yeah. Mark Smith. Yeah. Okay. He, he's an interesting dude. As I, understand I had Mark it. Goddard in my head as you were saying. No, that. that's a that's a, that gentleman is white. Holby Huffington hates that guy, Luke. Who? Mark Goddard. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about Mark Smith. I know. I know. Is he a good ref? You know what? I, shamefully, I will say I'm not as familiar with his <clears> work <throat> as I should be off the top of my head. So I'd be giving a bullshit answer. But you're right. What you say? What you what it's. But it, it's, it seems plausible what this person is suggesting. Luke, if uh, the UFC called right now and said, guys, you have been gifted with 90 minutes to hang out with any UFC referee you want, do we go right for Josh Rosenthal and just try to like put our noses inside of his mouth and just take a big whiff, Luke? Um, it wouldn't be Herb? Herb's probably got All some the good stories. Yeah. Uh, okay, to both LT and BC. It's your birthday. Your wives want to gift you with a threesome with a porn star. <laughs> what porn star do you choose? Rocco. Do- Rocco. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to see that hog in person. <laughs> it's like seeing a celebrity at the airport. You know? It's like, dude, is that, is that, is that Tom Selleck? <laughs> is that Rocco's? Is that Rocco's hog? <laughs> um, I mean, if this was like compliment, I'd be like, "Damn, man, you did so well for yourself." You know? um, I would, I would say Chasey Lane, but I don't want to look up where where she's what she looks like now. So that'd be a little bit. Uh, I, listen, I I want to answer this question, but by virtue of answering it, uh, everyone's opinion of me will lower because I'll give you somebody don't who do it. don't do it. who is just an absolute dirt ball in this industry. <laughs> So I'm just going to take the fifth. It's like Luke's into that shit. Jesus. Um, all right, BC. What's your favorite conspiracy theory? 
The anti-Semitic ones. You love those. Dude, uh, well, again, you're going to put, you're no, 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 you're going to put a this scarlet is, letter on me that's not no, deserved. No, no, no. It is true. It is true that there, there's not a hint of anti-Semitism in you. But rather, you do like the uh, conspiracy theories. You kind of strip the anti-Semitism from The European pink from ones them. is true. The, the country's really being run he by... He loves anti... He loves, he loves the all the parts of the anti-Semitic conspiracy no, theories. I, why is it anti-Semitic? Dude, a a global family of powerful Jews running the banking system. Well, it doesn't have to just be them. It could be the Illuminati in hand with them. The Rothschilds are they're not Christian. Are you saying they're they're actually lizard people? No, I am saying that they're uh, they are who they are. Uh, Part of that is Jewish. Okay, that's fine. Um, That's all I'm saying. I don't know. What is my favorite uh, conspiracy? You like? I I would say you're not super a UFO guy. No, 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 I, no, you're not super ghost guy. No, I'm definitely more government, um, government cover up, yeah, false yeah, flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're yeah. more like what bad things could our government be up to? I feel like that's yes. your brand of yes, and that that's that's not and that's not committed to any party. That's just committed to the idea that power like, that like the political system that that most of us worship. I don't believe is actually in play. I don't believe it matters, Luke. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know, but also you're deeply ignorant. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did. I did grow up on the floor, floor of a sawmill, so you know, in a in a, a burlap sack, Luke. So yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, we'll be doing this for an hour. I think that's it for questions. We don't have any more. Luke, do you have a favorite MMA conspiracy that um, MMA conspiracy that uh, said that what's his name Alexander took a fall for Kimbo? That happened, bro. That happened. Houston Alexander? No, I don't. I don't think so. You think that? I'm not. I'm. I'm saying I could believe it. Yeah. I mean, didn't Kimbo? Didn't didn't I Seth do, Petroselli I, say? I don't. I, if you ask me, like, is is that kind of thing possible in like a major modern MMA organization? I would honestly tell you, yes, it is certainly possible. Um, the two arguments I've made were one: if you saw it, you wouldn't even know it. Right, because they try to hide it. But what I mean to say is, I don't imagine it would happen under the guise of the actual organization itself. Like, dude, if they if there's any evidence that ever got leaked with that, they would lose their license forever. They I mean these promotions have an incredibly strong incentive to um, not but do that. Kimbo Bo Cantrell, not on the up and up. Okay, but here's my here's my point. Uh the fighters amongst themselves arranging things, yes, I can envision that being a real possibility. Like the teams talking to each other. Petrozelli did say that Elite XC asked Paid him, just him to stand. just to stand, but yeah. not not to determine an outcome per se. All right. I'm, I, am I going to wake up with a horse head in my bed? Look, if it is, I hope it, I hope uh, the dong of uh, Aaron Pico's horse is uh, is with that look. Okay, I, I bet you do. <laughs> You'd be like Rocco. Is that you? Wouldn't that be hilarious if you owned horses with like enormous hogs? And you're like, what are your what are your horses' names? You'd be like, this one's called Rocco, this one is called uh, Ivan. Uh, no, sorry, uh, Lex the Impaler. This one is whoever, and just name your horses after dudes with enormous slongs. That'd be baller. It's time, it's time to end it, Luke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. Right. Yeah, it is. Okay, uh, BC, you want to sign off? Say the f- nice things to the people. Uh, thank you, thank you for, uh, thank you. Right. <laughs> thank, yeah, thanks. thanks a lot. Right. We're tired and we're old, and uh, you know, subscribe to what we do here. Hopefully, you uh, caught that Bellator interview special. Uh, we had a lot of fun doing that. A lot of bonus content coming out of today. Um, you know, we'll be back live on Friday. Live chat with Luke on Thursday, unless you're going under the knife. Yes, unless I die. Yep. Um. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. That's it. Peace.